uh, Hubbard model is composed of kinetic energy plus interaction energy. <coughs> this model is responsible for describing the so-called both metal insulate transition and high temperature conductivity and maybe the other physics. There are two important parameters. One is the electron density, which is defined by this formula. Here, n site means number of sites in the lattice. Here, n is the number of electrons. <coughs> so, uh, when there is a one electron per every site, the case is called Hetfield case. The other parameters is the strength of the U. <coughs> So first, uh, let us explain what is the both metal inflate transition. Assume that uh, the Coulomb mutation is uh, larger than hopping strength, then uh, smaller than hopping strength. Then, as you can expect, the physics is dominated by kinetic Hamiltonian. <coughs> so we take uh, the kinetic term as unperturbed um, Hamiltonian, interaction term as a perturbation. Then if we purely transform the kinetic energy term, we get this kind of uh, relations. Here, epsilon k is the dispersion relation. <coughs> then we, we can also technically calculate the Green's function. From the Green's function, uh, we know the physics. We can calculate everything. The Green's function has just one pole. This means <coughs> there is just one band. So, who equal uh, for, for, equal, uh, for n equal 1, there is 2n state below the chemical potential, the state is occupied. Above the chemical potential, the states are empty. So, in this case, we can expect a uh, metallic behavior. But this happens only uh, in a dimension larger than 1. In 1D lattice case, it is shown that um, the half-field 1D Hubbard chain is um, both insulated for any non-zero value. Anyway, uh, in two dimension or three dimension, we can expect a metallic behavior. Then let us consider the other limit. In this case, the Coulomb interaction is larger than uh, <coughs> kinetic, uh, the hopping strength. Then we should invert the description. In this case, we take the Coulomb interaction as unperturbed Hamiltonian, kinetic term as perturbated Hamiltonian. <coughs> then in this, in this case, because of the strong Coulomb interaction, electron cannot move neighbors. So we can expect a kind of uh, insulating behavior. Technically, we can calculate the Green's function. You, here you see there are two poles. This means there are two bands. For n equal 1, <coughs> the lower band is occupied, upper band is empty. But these two bands are separated by Coulomb interaction. This is the so-called mode metal insulate transition. <coughs> but here we treated the problem in a perturbative way. We started from u equal 0 limit or u equal infinite limit. The now the question is, how can you describe this intermediate regime? <clears throat> is there any non-perturbative way to cover all parameter regime? So as a solution, we will employ offense mean field theory, the dynamic mean field theory. To explain the dynamic mean field theory, first let us review the classical bias mean field theory. I think this is a standard course of example. <coughs> uh, as an example, uh, let us consider ising spin on a lattice with a uh, magnetic field H. <coughs> then, mathematically, we can, we can subtract the average of spin and add the average of spin. Then, uh, defining this quantity, we can write the Hamiltonian in this form. The last term corresponds the fluctuation, so we can simply neglect fluctuations. Then, we obtain the so-called mean field Hamiltonian. <coughs> Here, the key idea is, the, is 
to map the original lattice problem into an impurity problem under the action of an effective field. Here, uh, effective field is vice field. <coughs> Then, using this uh, mean field Hamiltonian, we can calculate the Boltzmann weight. Then, uh, we can easily calculate also magnetization. In this case, we can solve this equation simply using the graphical solution. So, temperature is larger than some critical temperature. Magnetization is always zero, so we get a non-magnetic phase. But temperature is lower than critical temperature. We get some uh, non-zero magnetization. So, we can expect a phase transition from uh, non-magnetic state to magnetic state. But usually we cannot solve uh, the self-consistent equation using graphical solution. Usually we have to solve the self-consistent equation uh, using this kind of way. <clears throat> so, so far so good. However, the classical bias mean field theory neglect fluctuations in time as well as in space. <clears throat> So, you know, the classical mean field theory exact becomes exact in the infinite dimensions. Infinite dimensions, I mean uh, dimensions larger than 3 or a lattice with infinite realist neighbors, for example, beta lattice. Uh, so, uh, this can be regarded as infinite dimensions. <coughs> in classical mechanics, uh, average becomes exact when there are more and more labels. But <clears throat> quantum mechanics change everything. <clears throat> in the quantum mechanics, for example, in the Hubbard model, we also consider the internal dynamics of the site. In the Hubbard model, in each site can be empty or singly occupied or doubly occupied. So there is a dynamic equilibrium between this charge and spin state. <clears throat> so in quantum mechanics, the dynamics of the impurity size is important. <clears throat> so our purpose is, is to treat the on-site dynamics exactly and spatial correlations at the mean field level. This is the so-called dynamic mean field theory. So, uh, to explain the dynamic mean field theory, again we start from the Hubbard model. Then <clears throat> the problem is reduced to finding the Green's function. Here, exact Green's function contains self energy. The self energy uh, depends on momentum and energy. <clears throat> momentum is the conjugate variable of space, so it means it contains. Spatial fluctuations. Here, energy is the conjugate variable of time, so it means it contains temporal fluctuations. <clears throat> so the problem is to find the, the self energy, but in reality, it is impossible. So, uh, as in the classical mechanics, we consider infinite dimensions. <clears throat> in infinite dimensions, we can prove that uh, the self energy. does not depend on the momentum, but it depends on energy. So, so uh, in the dynamic mean field theory, at first we have to prove this identity. Uh, uh, to prove the identity, let us uh, consider the scaling law of the hopping amplitude. Here, hypercubic lattice means Lattice in a, uh, in a dimension larger than 3. We can imagine 4 dimension or 5 dimension. So, employing the <coughs> tight binding model and uh, considering only nearest neighbors hopping, we can find the dispersion law. 
then we can easily calculate density of state. The final result is this one. Here it is the dimension of the lattice. So uh, when d goes to infinity, this density of state vanishes. This means this is on physical. <coughs> so to get a physical density of state, we have to scale the hopping strength in this way. Using this uh, scaling law, we can prove the Green's function also behaves in this way. Then, using the standard diagrammatic uh, expansion, we can prove the self energy does not depend on the space, only depends on uh, energy. <coughs> this, is, this identity is the, at the heart of the DNFT. Also, using this scaling law, we can map the original lattice into an effective impurity model. <coughs> Here, G0 is the unportable Green's function, it plays the role of the bias field. Unlike the classical bias field, here quantum bias field depends on time. So, this means <coughs> we keep the temporal fluctuations. This is different from the classical bias field. <coughs> but we can safely neglect the spatial fluctuations in the infinite dimensions. As in the Classical Heisman field theory, uh, we have to solve uh, self consistent equations. Here, first we, put, we take self energy is equal to zero, then we can calculate the local lattice Green's function. Then, using this local Green's function, we can calculate the pi scale. Then, pi scale is the input for the impurity solver. From the impurity solver, we can calculate the impurity Green's function. Using the, this impurity Green's function, we can calculate the self energy. Then, again, we can calculate the local Green's function. So, this uh, self consistency loop is repeated until convergence is reached. <coughs> so, in this way, we can calculate the bias scale. <coughs> Here, the difficult task is to find the solution of the impurity solver. <coughs> Up to here, mm. so far so good, the DMFT is exact in infinite dimensions, so we can safely neglect the spatial fluctuations. But <coughs> in reality, we assume the DMFT is still valid in 2D or 3D or even in 1D. <coughs> in this case, we can neglect uh, spatial fluctuations. So, how can we solve this problem? <coughs> Solution is simple. This is the so called uh, cluster DMT. First, we divide lattice in this way, then, we consider multiple impurity. Mm -hmm. Then, this means we consider uh, short range, short range uh, fluctuations, spatial fluctuations. So, in this way, we can keep spatial fluctuations, fluctuations to some extent. There are two methods. One is the CDMT, the other one is DCA. Uh, CDMT is based on real space division. DCA is uh, based on momentum space divisions. <coughs> DCA is more popular in literature. So, in this way, we can uh, include temporal fluctuations and spatial fluctuations. I said the most uh, difficult job is, uh, is, is to find the solution of impurity solvers. There are two classes. Two classes of impurity solvers. One is the Hamiltonian based solvers, the other one is action based solvers. <coughs> Hamiltonian based solvers uh, include uh, exact diagonalization and numerical renormalization group technique. 
action-based servers uh, include Monte Carlo simulation and the others. First, I will explain what is the uh, numerical renormalization group. Uh, we want to this kind of problem. <coughs> Here, continuum is, uh, uh, the path is described by continuum. In, in the analysis technique, we describe, we discretize the path in this way. So, we replace the continuum path by a tight binding path. <coughs> then, First, we start from the impurity side and by taking on appropriate basis, we diagonalize the Hamiltonian. Then next, we add uh, impurity side one by one. By taking appropriate basis, we also diagonalize and keep lowest eigenvalues. In this way, uh, since we obtain the eigenvalues, we can calculate everything. <coughs> Uh, energy has a merit. Um, in energy, the zero temperature can zero, zero temperature limit can be easily reached. Also, we can easily uh, handle the large case. Also, since it is based on the diagonalization of the Hamiltonian, there is there are no statistical errors. Also, it is a real frequency formalism, so there are we don't need to analytically continue. <clears throat> but uh, energy cannot extend it to the multiple side problem because Hilbert space grows exponentially. So in the literature, usually we don't use the energy. Uh, let us examine what is the action-based uh, impurity server. The most popular one is Monte Carlo simulation. In the Monte Carlo simulation, we choose a configuration, then sample it with a weight. But quantum Monte Carlo simulation is different from classical simulation. <coughs> in the classical uh, partition function, there is in the configuration space there is no time. But uh, quantum partition function include time. Here action is the time integral of Lagrangian. So here is time. So quantum Monte Carlo simulation there is a time. Time is the essential part of configuration space for quantum Monte Carlo simulation. Technically we say the dimensional, uh, d-dimensional quantum system corresponds to the d plus one dimensional classical system. Also this is called Older line simulation. Older line simply means uh, trajectory in space and time. This is the recipe for quantum Monte Carlo simulation. First, we start from partition function, then divide Hamiltonian in this way, unportable Hamiltonian and perturbation Hamiltonian. Then, using the standard diagrammatic technique. Uh, we can expand. We can expand the partition function, so we get <coughs> the weights. In principle, uh, we can sample up to finite order, then truncate. But this is a perturbative approach. In the quantum Monte Carlo simulation, we do not proceed in this way. We sample all orders. So, quantum Monte Carlo simulation is <coughs> non-perturbative simulation. Uh, I will employ the, the so-called continuous time Monte Carlo, but before that, let us review most widely used uh, Hirsch-Pi algorithm. Hirsch-Pi algorithm is based on Suzuki throttle decomposition. Here, uh, we decompose, <coughs> first we write, we discretize uh, the time, then we um, decompose the Boltzmann weight in this way. But as you know, as you know, the, according to the baker house formula, this is wrong, but delta tau is small, we can accept this one. Anyway, but uh, this algorithm is subject to the discretization errors. Also in principle, 
Mm, and ten plus goes to zero, beta goes to infinity. So, in principle, this algorithm cannot sample the zero temp, cannot reach the zero temperature range. In the continuous time Monte Carlo uh, simula simulation, we do not discretize the time. In this algorithm, the time is a continuous variable. <coughs> there are many, many algorithms. But in the Monte Carlo simulation, there is a, a, one famous problem, the so-called sign problem. <coughs> in classical way, Boltzmann weight is always positive, but quantum weights can be negative. So <coughs> quantum weights cannot be interpreted as a probability distribution. <coughs> Within the Matsubara formalism, bosons are free from the sign problem, fermion is fermion uh, suffers from serious sign problem. Uh, it is easy to understand the origin of the sign problem. Let us simply consider two identical, two identical particles. So, uh, according to quantum mechanics, we know boson has a symmetric wave functions, but uh, fermions have an anti-symmetric uh, wave function. So, then, if we calculate the partition function, in case of bosons, the weight is always positive, but in case of fermions, it can be negative uh, according, uh, according to the relative magnitude. This is the origin of the sign problem. <coughs> but we can avoid this problem. <coughs> when we get negative weight, simply uh, we use uh, absolute value. Okay? Simply we multiply by uh, it by minus one, then divide by minus one. So uh, we sample uh, we sample the configuration with absolute weights, but here there is a denominator. This is the sum of the sign. Uh, sum of the sign is equal to one. There is no problem, but denominator uh, the sample change sign very frequently. This will be go to zero, then error is uh, amplified. <coughs> Here, the st this formula shows the relative strength of the of the sine error. Here, temperature goes to zero, the sine error is severe. Also, the system size increases, the sine problem is severe. Yeah. <coughs> anyway. Using this absolute weight, we can avoid the sign problem. Uh, the continuous time Monte Carlo, in principle, this is exact, unbiased, and and thus uh, it is most popular method in the literature. Also, uh, with this method, we can consider multiple empirical problems. So this is the most popular. Method, but there are many many problems. Sign problem also the in principle the zero temperature limit can be reached, but in practice the zero temperature limit cannot be reached. Also, it is difficult to deal with uh, the large U case. Also, Monte Carlo basically uh, we are doing some uh, dice game, so there are statistical errors. Also. Monte, uh, Monte Carlo is based on the imaginary time formalism, so uh, we have to analytically continue it to the real frequency. Although there are, there are many problems, this method is the most popular method in the literature. So this, is the, uh, this figure shows the result, both metal insulate transmission. In this work, DMT plus energy was employed. Here you can see, here beta lattice means uh, lattice with infinite labels. Hypercubic lattice means this kind of uh, uh, lattice. Then U is smaller than some critical temperature. 
uh, critical value, then there is a weight in the Fermi level. So this means this is a met this is a metal. But when we increase the value of the Coulomb interaction, the weight decreases, and uh, we can observe the gap above the some critical value. <coughs> so we observe metal to insulate transition as a function of the Coulomb interaction. <coughs> The DM did well describe this kind of wood metal insulated transition. So now I will explain what is the high temperature conductor. <coughs> According to the BCS theory, <coughs> uh, the highest conducting transition temperature is about 30 K, 30 Kelvin. But up to 1986, the, high the highest uh, critical temperature was 23. But this paper changed the world. <coughs> so by definition, mean, uh, by, de by definition, high temperature conductor means uh, a conductor larger than um, uh, 3 Kelvin. Usually high temperature conductor is called cuprate. Cuprate means copper in Latin. Cuprate uh, has, a, uh, has a layered structure. So there is a charged reservoir layer and copper dioxide plane and charged reservoir layer and copper dioxide plane. Each copper dioxide plane is uh, so and each a copper dioxide plane are independent. So most people below believe the copper dioxide plane is responsible for the conductivity. The charge carrier layer simply provide carrier charge carriers to the copper dioxide plane. So in theory, to this this is enough to model the high pitch uh, conductor. This is the phase diagram of the high pitch conductor. Uh, uh, right hand side shows the whole duct case, and left hand side shows electron duct case. Here is antiparameter case, and pseudo case, and uh, conducting base. <coughs> There are many, many uh, conducting materials, high pitch conducting materials, but they show the same behaviors. So our purpose is to reproduce this phase diagram. <coughs> uh, what is known to us? First, uh, conductivity in the cuprate is due to the formation of copper pairs. <coughs> this means uh, two electrons make a pair due to that superconductivity occurs. Also, uh, superconductivity in the cuprate are due to the copper dioxide planes. <coughs> each copper dioxide plane are independent from each other. So also the order parameter has a <coughs> is a spin singlet and the orbital symmetry is D-wave. <coughs> uh, according to the standard BCS theory, the electron corner interaction is responsible for the formation of copper pairs. But uh, electron corner interaction cannot explain the high temperature conductivity. It is believed that electron-electron interaction is responsible for the high temperature conductivity. <clears throat> so I said 2D lattice model is enough to model the conductivity. According to the Anderson, the Hubbard model can do it. <coughs> so we will again start from the Hubbard model. In the previously, um, previously we considered only uh, non-magnetic phase, but <coughs> according to the discrete energy, um, 
due to the discount energy, there is a virtual hopping, so we can reduce the Hubbard model to the so-called Heisenberg anti -paramagnet. So, finding the ground state, we can understand the underlying physics. So, uh, I will explain the Heisenberg anti -paramagnet. <coughs> Here, using the spin uh, raising or lowering operator, we can write Heisenberg model in this way. Then, what is the ground state of this model? <coughs> um, in the classical survey, the so-called real state is the ground state of the anti parameter model. But here is the quantum fluctuation. This quantum fluctuation destroy the nil order. So in quantum mechanics, the nil order is not the ground state of the Heisenberg antiparamagnet. Then as next we can the so-called balance bound state. Here balance bound state means a state which is made of single spin single state. So the question is what is the ground state between new state and balance bound state and balance bound state? <coughs> In 1D, we can easily calculate the energy of the new state and balance bound state. The energy of the new state is minus 1 of 4, single state is uh, minus 3 of 4. So you see, single state is the ground state, but this is not the story. <clears throat> uh, using the Bethe assets, we can exactly solve one the Heisenberg antiparamet problem. So, the true ground state is in between nil state and single state. But in 2D lattice case, there is no exact solution. No exact solution is known. Then, again, you can consider the real state and balance bound state. <clears throat> Again, we can calculate the energy of the real state and balance bound state. So, according to this simple calculation, the real state is the ground state, but the real state is lower in energy. So, you will think the real state is the ground state of a 2D uh, anti parameter model. <clears throat> But this is not the story of uh, this is not the end of the story. <coughs> In the chemistry class, uh, we learned uh, benzene has a, uh, the benzene molecule has a two possible uh, configurations, but the true ground state is the superposition of these two. Uh, these two possible configuration, uh, these two possible configurations, the L polling for this resonating balance bound state. Anderson followed this chemistry idea, then made a superposition of the balance bound state. So, this is called uh, resonating balance bound state. <coughs> Making superposition of uh, Making the superposition of um, balance bound state, we can decrease energy further. So, between real state and algorithmic state, we don't know which one is the energetically favorable. But numerical simulation shows <coughs> for n equal one, the antiparametric that is real state uh, is the ground state. Okay, so in this space diagram, we can explain this region. But with the, we can dope hole. By with the hole doping, we create a hole in the lattice. Then electron can move through the um, Bacon side. In this case, we don't know which one is the ground state between 
the new state and balanced bond state. <coughs> According to Anderson, he thought this um, resonating RVB state is the ground state. Then, this uh, singly pairs condensate into the Cooper pairs. Thus, <coughs> this is the mechanism for the Cooper pair, according to Anderson. <coughs> so, with small hole doping, there is a, a small vacancy, so electron cannot move freely. So, critical temperature is lower. Critical temperature is low. But above the some across the some critical value, the the critical temperature again reduced is reduced because there is no uh, there are not enough single pairs. So we can also explain this dome-like structure. This is the uh, famous uh, Anderson's Hilbert uh, theory. This is the mechanism. For the high dish conductor. But in addition to the Anderson's RVB theory, there are many, many theories to explain these phase diagrams. Uh, Anderson's RVB theory is one of them. <coughs> uh, so most studies start from the Hubbard model, then investigate the emergence of pair. In our theory, we don't care about we don't care about the pairing mechanism. We simply add uh, <coughs> the pairing term to our Hamiltonian. Here, the here mm, the pairing amplitude is not constant. It uh, it has a the so-called D-wave pairing uh, symmetry. Uh, more exactly, it has dx square minus y square symmetry. <coughs> so, simply we add this term to our Hamiltonian. Before uh, our idea, <coughs> uh, let us briefly come back to the conventional PCS theory. This is the so called uh, PCS. Uh, reduced Hamiltonian. Then in the standard textbook, we decouple these four operator terms in this way by defining the order parameter. So we get the so-called mean field Hamiltonian. <coughs> but we can proceed in another way. Uh, in the original paper, you can See, the PCS employed the variational approach. <coughs> In the conventional theory, the PCS uh, found the trial wave function for the conducting state. Okay, here uh, C dagger C explains the Cooper pair. <coughs> also, this is the wave function of the normal Fermi key. Then, Using these two wave functions, they calculate the expectation values of the <coughs> reduced Hamiltonian. Then, um, this is the so-called condensation energy. So, condensation, if the condensation energy is smaller than zero, we can explain the occurrence of pairing in conductors. <coughs> Exactly, we proceed in this way, but the problem is uh, we don't know what is the what are the trial wave functions for the BCS model and Hubbard model. In the previous case, we know what is the <coughs> wave functions, but in our case, we don't know what is the wave functions. But we can obtain the trial wave functions numerically. Yeah. Here to obtain the trial wave functions, we use we employ the DMFT plus DCA, here multi cluster method. <coughs> then we can calculate 
the expectation value of the Hubbard model with respect to the BCS plus U model wave functions and Hubbard model wave functions. So in the same way, we can define the condensation energy. <coughs> so this figure shows uh, my result. Here, um, uh, red scale is the energy of the forward model. The other is uh, energy of the DCS plus U model. <coughs> Here you can see the energy of the PCS plus U model is lower than Hubbard model. So, uh, in this way, we can prove uh, the occurrence of the pairing in the conductors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the problem is <coughs> uh, this shows our computer clusters. There are many, many uh, CPUs. I use uh, 400 CPUs. <coughs> Deploy uh, parallel uh, program technique. But mm, to, mm, to get a just Q point, it takes one month. So we have to cover all parameters. So <laughs> it is too painful. <laughs> So we need a cheap answer. Uh, according to my collaborator, the so-called semi-classical impurity cyber is cheaper. He said uh, it takes just five or ten minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> we expect <laughs> something. So the purpose is to cover all parameter lines. Yeah, but still, it is hopeless. I get just few points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm. Is applied to the, was applied to the uh, Howard model. Okay. Yes. So there are already some results. Yeah. Okay. Also, here I, is, I said mm, boson is people on the same problem, but I think uh, in this case we used only, mm -hmm. this is because we used the imaginary time formalism. Uh -huh. If we use the real time formalism, then you have boson will have also. Same problem because 
exponential i h t. So because of i, the weights oscillate. If there are no more questions, then let us thank you again.